Hello everyone. So today we're going to go through the trig graphing and inverses stations. Um, so with station one, we're asked to um, find the period and amplitude for each of the following. The first one is y equals negative 3 sine 2 pi over 3 x minus pi plus 3. Well, we know that the period is 2 pi over b for sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant. Remember, for tangent and cotangent, we wouldn't have 2 pi over b, we'd just have pi over b, because the period of tangent and cotangent is pi. The period for these other four functions is 2 pi. Okay, so we're going to do 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 3. And then we're going to flip and multiply, 3 over 2 pi. And I'm going to get that the period is equal to 3. The amplitude is this number, not the negative. Amplitude is always positive, so my amplitude is 3. Okay, problem number 2. Uh, we're given y equals cosine pi over 4x minus pi over 2 plus 2. Again, we're just looking for the period and the amplitude. Again, period is still going to be found with 2 pi over b. My b value this time is pi over 4, so 2 pi over pi over 4, which is 2 pi times 4 over pi, which is 8. Okay, and the amplitude? Well, I don't see a number here, which tells me that the amplitude is 1. And finally, number 3 says y equals sine x over 4 minus pi over 3 plus 9. Well, I see the amplitude is 1 again, like the last problem, but what about our period? Well, period equals 2 pi over, and what number do we have here? We have 1 fourth here. So 2 pi times 4 over 1, or 8 pi. 8 pi is going to be my period for number 3. Okay, that's station 1. Let's take a look at station 2. Ooh, station 2 is a graphing problem. Graph with exact values. y equals 2 cosine x minus pi over 4 plus 1. Well, remember, we're going to set the argument equal to 0 and 2 pi for one period. And it does say one period here. x minus pi over 4 equals 0, and x minus pi over 4 equals 2 pi. So I get x equals pi over 4 is 1 end, and <clears throat> x equals 8 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4 is 9 pi over 4. So I'll start by labeling on my number line pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4. Remember we need to find quarter points now, so halfway in between these is going to be 5 pi over 4. And remember, you can do that by adding these and doubling the denominator. Or you can add this plus this and then divide by 2. If I find my quarter point here, halfway between 1 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, that would be 3 pi over 4. And halfway between 5 and 7 pi over 4 is going to be so, I'm sorry, between 5 pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4 is going to be 7 pi over 4. This is a positive cosine graph, so I'm going to start high, go to the midline, down low, and then back up again. Remember to think about concavity here. Concave up, and then concave down. Concave down, and then concave up. This shouldn't look like absolute value of x. Okay, step three, we're going to label our sinusoidal axis. Our sinusoidal axis is this number, y equals 1. And our amplitude for step four is this number, 2, which means from here I go up 2. 
So this ordered pair is going to be pi over 4, 1 plus 2 is 3. And this one over here will be 9 pi over 4, 3. But this one down here, instead of going up 2, we went down 2. 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1. And there's station 2. Station 2. Okay, let's take a look at station 3. Graphing, ooh, graphing inverse tangent. Okay, remember inverse tangent has horizontal asymptotes, like a logistic curve. Normally, these are at y equals negative pi over 2 and y equals pi over 2. And it has the characteristic shape with an inflection point at 0, 0. There's tangent inverse of x equals y. Okay, but what are we asked to graph here in station 3? Station 3, we're asked to graph y equals tangent inverse x minus 3 plus pi over 4. Well, when we talked about graphing these in class, we said that we were going to graph um, using uh, transformations. Uh, this is an x transformation, add 3 to all the x's, and this is the only x point there is. So my new ordered pair is going to be 3, comma 0. That's all the x transformations. Now, what about the y transformations? Well, here I see I'm supposed to add pi over 4 to all the y values. So here's a y value, here's a y value, here's a y value. I'm going to add pi over 4 to each of these y values. And when I do, I get these new points. I get negative pi over 4 here. I get 3 pi over 4 here. And when I add pi over 4 to 0, well, I get pi over 4. And so there's my graph for station number 3. All done. Station number four looks like a bunch of draw a triangle problems. Station number four. Okay, so we've got the secant of cosine inverse of five over 13. You know, there's two ways of doing this problem. Uh, the one that most students do is to draw the triangle where the cosine would be five over 13, and then I would use the Pythagorean theorem or my knowledge of Pythagorean triples to find this missing side, which would turn out to be 12. Okay, and so this would be theta. And so this part here says what angle has a cosine of 5 over 13? And the answer is this angle over here. And so if this is what angle, then this is the secant of that angle. So what's the secant in this picture? Well, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, and so we get 13 over 5. So one way to do this problem, I think it's the longer way, is to think about uh, drawing a triangle, labeling, finding the angle, and saying what's the secant of that angle. That's going to be a bulletproof method. It's always going to work. But in this case, because cosine and secant are reciprocals, Notice my cosine was 5 over 13, and my ultimate answer, secant 13 over 5, just the reciprocal. Okay, 2. Tangent of sine inverse of x. And instead of just writing this as x, I'm going to write it as x over 1. So when I draw my triangle, I'm going to think of my sine as opposite over hypotenuse. Sometimes if I don't have that one there, I get stuck in this problem because I forget what to label the hypotenuse. Okay, so again, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem, not Pythagorean triples, to find this missing side. Um, question mark squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. And I'm trying to solve for this missing side, so let's get question mark alone. Question mark squared would be 1 minus x squared. And when we take the square root of both sides, 
question mark will be the square root of 1 minus x squared. So, square root 1 minus x squared. There's my missing side. All right, that's what angle has a sine of x over 1, this angle here. And then this says, well, what's the tangent of that angle? And tangent is opposite over adjacent. And no, I really don't need you to rationalize the denominator here. Um, we're just going to leave our answer like this. This is the tangent of that angle, opposite over adjacent. Okay, 3, sine of tangent inverse 24 over 7. Oh, and it's negative. Okay, so remember tangent has uh, inverse tangent is restricted between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And so instead of drawing a triangle over here or over here, I have to draw this triangle here where I have negative 24, 7. And again, I'm going to use either my uh, Pythagorean theorem or Pythagorean triples to find out that this is 25. The question asks, what's the sine in this picture? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so we get negative 24 over 25. And finally, number four, number four on station four says, what's the cosine of sine inverse of one over x? Okay, well, let's draw a triangle where the sine is one over x this time. One x theta. If I use the Pythagorean theorem, <clears throat> I'll end up with square root x squared minus 1 here. And I want to know what's the cosine in this picture. Well, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so my answer is going to be square root of x squared minus 1 over x. Please don't take the square root of x squared and the square root of 1 and make x minus 1 over x and then do that. That's called double pool noodle. You can't do either of those things. That's really, really terrible. Please stop that. Okay, so that's it for station four. Let's take a look at station five. Station five is another graphing problem. This time we're graphing a cotangent with station five. We've got y equals negative cotangent x minus pi over two. Well, remember with cotangent, we don't set the argument to zero and two pi. The period for cotangent is only pi. So we're going to set the argument x minus pi over 2 equal to 0 and x minus pi over 2 equal to pi. So my graph here starts at x equals pi over 2 and ends its period at x equals 3 pi over 2. Remember, this is where the vertical asymptotes are located. We've got a vertical asymptote at x equals pi over 2 and another vertical asymptote at x equals 3 pi over 2. Now, if it were cotangent, my graph would look like this. But this is negative cotangent. So it's going to have that tangent shape to it. Okay? And halfway in between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, we're going to find our inflection point. That'll be pi 0. Notice there's no d value here, so there's no shift up or down for this. This remains zero as a y value half, um, where, uh, where the reference graph normally has its inflection point. And that's station five. That's all there is to it. Station six is another graphing problem, but this time we're graphing a tangent instead of a cotangent. Station six, y equals tangent 3 pi x minus 2 pi. Okay, but tangent's argument doesn't get set equal to 0 or 2 pi, 0 and 2 pi. It doesn't get set equal to 0 and pi like cotangent. We set the argument for tangent equal to negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, so I want to add 2 pi or 4 pi over 2 to this. 
I'm going to have 3 pi x equals 5 pi over 2's. And then I'm going to divide by 3 pi. And I see that uh, these pi's can cancel, and 2 times 3 is 6, so I get 5 over 6. x equals 5, 6. And when I repeat this process with pi over 2, I have O, O. Yeah, do you see what I did wrong? I actually did this one. I thought I was doing positive pi over 2. So this one is done. I still need to do the negative pi over 2. When I add 4 pi over 2 to negative pi over 2, I'm going to get 3 pi over 2, not 5 pi over 2. Okay, and that's what 3 pi x equals. I'll divide both sides by 3 pi. Cancel out the pi's and get 3 over 6. Now, I'm very tempted to reduce this fraction. However, in order to find the average of these two, to find that halfway point, it's going to be much easier if I have a common denominator. So let's draw in our vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 6 and x equals 5 6 and halfway between 3 6 and 5 6 is 4 6. This is a plain old tangent graph, so I'm going to make my tangent D shape and put in 4, 6, 0. No D value, so no shift, so this is still at 0. Okay, there's station 6. Station 7 asks us to go backwards, and the first thing we, we need to do when we go backwards, remember, is to identify what family of curves. Now, some students want to say that this graph is tangent. Well, I know this graph is not tangent for two reasons. First, it has endpoints. Tangent goes on forever. Second, tangent, while it has a similar shape to this, has vertical asymptotes. I don't see any vertical asymptotes here, so I don't think this is tangent. In fact, what I remember this being the shape for is y equals sine inverse of x. Remember sine inverse of x, this is normally at 0, 0. This is normally at negative pi over... negative 1, negative pi over 2, and positive 1, positive pi over 2. Well, let's take a look at our graph. Okay, I notice, ooh, my 0, 0 point is now at 1, 0. So I think I've shifted the graph to the right one. I think my b value equals 1. Okay, um, what else do we notice? Well, normally this is at um, 1 and pi over 2. But now it's at 2. Well, that's consistent. If I add 1 to 1, I get 2. And if I add 1 to negative 1, I get 0. So I think my x transformations are taken care of just by this. But I notice the y value here is different. This is pi over 2. Uh, this is pi, but originally we had pi over 2. Well, what I'm not sure about just by looking at one point is, did I multiply this original point by 2 to get this, or did I add pi over 2 to this to get this? Well, let's check the 0, 0 point. Okay, so 0, 0 here, and if I add pi over 2 to this, my new point should be pi over 2, but it's not. So I think that other option, where I take this point and I multiply by 2 and get my new point pi, is what we're doing here. So I think here, because if I multiply this by 2, I still get 0. So I think my a value is 2. I don't think I have a d value here. Nothing was shifted up. This graph was stretched. Let's test it with this bottom point. If I multiply negative pi over 2 by 2, do I get negative pi? I sure do. So that means the equation here on station 7 is y equals 2 inverse sine x minus 1. And we're all done with station 7. Let's take a look at station 8. It's graphing an inverse sine function. 
station eight. We've got y equals negative one half sine inverse of x minus two pi. Okay, well, I see two y transformations and I don't see any x transformations here. So this will be straightforward. Let's start with the reference points. Um, negative, negative one, negative pi over two, zero, zero, and one pi over two. So remember with y transformations, we follow PEMDAS, so I multiply all the y's by negative one half. Okay, so negative times negative is positive, and pi over two times one over two is going to be pi over four. And here, zero times that is still zero. And here, when I multiply by negative one half, I get one negative pi over four. Okay, but we have a second y transformation here. We need to subtract two pi or eight pi over four from all of these y values. So my new points are going to be negative one, negative seven pi over four, zero, negative eight pi over four, because that's negative two pi, and one, negative nine pi over four. Now, we know that the characteristic shape of inverse sine looks like this, but this negative in the front flips the graph upside down. So I have this shape. What are our points? Well, we've got negative one, negative seven pi over four, zero, negative two pi, and one, negative nine pi over all right, so all we had to do was apply our y transformations to that uh, in order to get our graph. And that was pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at station nine. Oh, station nine, a bunch of whiteboard problems and then some draw triangles. Station nine. Okay, one A, sine inverse of one. Okay, so the way I read this is what angle within the restriction of sine has an upness of one? Well, sine's restriction is negative pi over two to pi over two, and where from negative pi over two to pi over two is the upness equal to one? Well, that happens at pi over two. B, sine inverse negative one. Again, what angle within the restriction of sine has an upness of negative one? Now, many students who aren't paying enough attention write three pi over two, because on the unit circle, they know the upness or y value is negative one at three pi over two. But three pi over two isn't within the restriction of inverse sine. Inverse sine goes from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So all our answers have to be within this. Where is the upness negative one here? Right here at negative pi over two. Okay, C, we've got tangent inverse of one. What angle within the restriction of inverse tangent, remember that's also negative pi over two to pi over two, has a tangent value of one? Well, in order for tangent to be one, that would be the sine value and the cosine value, or the y value and the x value, being the same. And that happens at pi over four. D, D says, oh, that was D, I'm sorry, that was D. C, however, is cosine inverse, negative root three over two. Okay, what angle within the restriction of inverse cosine? Remember, the restriction for inverse cosine isn't the same as that of these other two. The restriction is zero to pi. So what angle on zero to pi has an x value or overness of negative root three over two? And that would be five pi over six.
We're comfortable with our unit circle, and we know that. Okay, what about E? E says sine inverse of negative root 3 over 2. Again, the restriction for inverse sine is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So my answers here are not going to be 4 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. My answer is going to be negative pi over 3. I have to choose an answer that's from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 that has that upness of negative root 3 over 2. That only happens at negative pi over 3. Okay, and there's an F. F says cosine of cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. Okay, so uh, is this one of those cases where we can cancel out the cosine and the inverse cosine because they're inverse functions? Well, if we're not sure, we can always check. What angle within the restriction of inverse cosine has an overness or x value of negative root 2 over 2? Well, that would be 3 pi over 4. Okay, so I can replace all of this with 3 pi over 4. What's the cosine of 3 pi over 4? Oh, well, that's the x value of 3 pi over 4, which is negative root 2 over 2. So I can, in fact, um, just cancel these out in this situation. In g, cosine inverse cosine 5 pi over 3. Well, can I cancel cosine inverse, not g inverse? Can I cancel these out? Well, the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is 1 half. Cosine inverse, 1 half. But what angle within the restriction of inverse cosine has an x value of 1 half? Remember that restriction is 0 to pi. And so my answer here isn't going to be the original 5 pi over 3. It's in fact going to be something from 0 to pi. It's going to be pi over 3. So the rule was you can cancel out these inverse functions unless the given angle, this wasn't an angle, unless the given angle is outside of the restriction for that function, okay? All right, so let's take a look at part two here. Um, part two is more draw triangle problems, sine, of tangent inverse of x. And so I need to draw a triangle where the tangent is x over 1. I use the Pythagorean theorem to get x squared plus 1 under the square root here. There's my theta, and I want to know what's the sine of theta. Well, sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so x over root x squared plus 1. All right, what about this next one? This next one, b says cotangent of tangent inverse of mm, 1 over x. Well, mm, I remember something about these, but in case you don't remember, let's draw that triangle. Tangent is 1 over x. And if I use the Pythagorean theorem here, I get square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, that's great. So there's my angle, there's my picture, and what's the cotangent in this picture? Well, cotangent is adjacent over opposite, and so we get x over 1. And so just like we saw on that earlier station, because these are reciprocal functions, all I need to do is give the reciprocal of my original argument. C says cosecant of tangent inverse of x over root 2. Okay, so let's draw a triangle for this. Tangent inverse is x over root 2. So we know the opposite is x and the adjacent is root 2. If I use the Pythagorean theorem, I get the square root of x squared plus the squaring of root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. 
And then I'm asked to find the cosecant of this angle, the cosecant in this situation, and that's going to be square root of x squared plus 2 over root 2. Wait, cosecant, sorry, over x. Excellent. And then finally, d tangent of sine inverse of negative 3 over 4. Okay, so if I draw this triangle, and I'm using this quadrant because um, inverse sine goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and we know that um, inverse sine is opposite, well, we're talking about uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so this is negative 3, and this is 4. This is not 5. 5 would be bigger than the hypotenuse. That wouldn't be cool. Now, instead, when I use the Pythagorean theorem here, I get the square root of 7. So, <coughs> so what's the tangent in this picture? Negative 3 over root 7. <coughs> if you want to rationalize here, negative 3 root 7 over 7. Okie doke, there's station 9. Let's take a look at station 10. Um, station 10 is another graphing problem. Um, y equals negative sine x plus pi over 3. So x plus pi over 3 equals 0. x plus pi over 3 equals 2 pi. I get x equals negative pi over 3, and here x equals 6 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3 is going to be 5 pi over 3. So, our period starts at negative pi over 3 and ends at 5 pi over 3. Halfway between negative 1 and positive 5 is going to be 2 pi over 3. Right, because this distance is 3 pi over 3, and this distance is 3 pi over 3. Well, now I want halfway in between these. So I add the numerators and double the denominator. So I end up here at 7 pi over 6. I add the numerators and double the denominator. I get 1 pi over 6. Okay, this is a negative sign graph, so it does start on the midline and go down, back up, to its high point, and then back to the midline. So the amplitude here is 1, so we know we're going up 1 from y equals 0. So this is 7 pi over 6, 1. And down here we have pi over 6, negative 1. And that's our graph. We're all done with station 10. Station 11, another graphing problem. This time we're graphing y equals 2 secant 2x minus pi over 2. So for secant, we graph cosine first. And for cosine, I set the argument equal to 0 and 2 pi. So <clears throat> 2x minus pi over 2 equals 0. And 2x minus pi over 2 equals 2 pi. I end up here with 2x equals pi over 2, or x equals not pi. I have to divide both sides by 2, so I get pi over 4. And then here, 2x, I add pi over 2 to 2 pi, which is 4 pi over 2. I get 5 pi over 2. And when I divide by 2, I get 5 pi over 4. So our graph starts at pi over 4 and ends at 5 pi over 4, halfway in between 3 pi over 4, halfway in between each of these, 2 pi over 4, and 4 pi over 4. Of course, you can reduce these. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to start graphing my cosine. Remember, cosine starts high, goes down to its low point, and then comes back up again. And wherever this cosine graph crosses the sinusoidal axis, that's going to be a place where our secant graph 
has a vertical asymptote. So we know there's a vertical asymptote at 2 pi over 4 and another vertical asymptote at 4 pi over 4 or pi. We want to now draw in our secant graph. Our secant goes up, goes down, and goes up uh, and bends to that asymptote. Earth. Okay. And what about these ordered pairs? Well, I see the amplitude is 2 and the d value is 0. So this is y equals 0, go up 2. This must be pi over 4, 2. This must be 5 pi over 4, also 2. But this one here is going to be 3 pi over 4, negative 2. Don't forget to label those points. Okay, there's station 11. What about station 12? Station 12 asks us to graph one period of y equals negative one-half cosecant one-half x minus pi. Okay, so for cosecant I graph sine. I set this argument one-half x minus pi equal to zero and one-half x minus pi equal to two pi. I'm going to add pi to both sides, I get 1 half x equals pi, and then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get x equals 2 pi. Over here, I've got 2 pi plus 1 pi will be 3 pi, and that's 1 half x, but when I multiply by 2, I get x equals 6 pi. So my graph is going to start at 2 pi, end at 6 pi. Halfway in between, I'm going to have 4 pi. Quarter points would then be at 3 pi and 5 pi. Okay, I'm graphing a sign. Ooh, I'm graphing a negative sign. So I'm going to start on the midline. I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to reach my high point, and I'm going to come back to the midline. So this would be my negative sine graph, but we want a cosecant. So remember, wherever this negative sine crosses the sinusoidal axis, cosecant is going to have a vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptotes of cosecant in this case are x equals 2 pi, x equals 4 pi, and x equals 6 pi. Don't forget to draw in your characteristic shape. Yoink, yoink. Please go all the way to the asymptotes. Okay, and we need to label these points. This point here, there's negative one half. So I'm at y equals zero, and I'm going down a half. So this must be three pi negative one half. And here we're going up one half. And so this will be five pi positive one. And the green and red is the graph of our secant. Remember, this is not part of our graph. That's just a tool to help us with our graph. Okay, there's problem number uh, station 12. Station 13 is a going backwards problem. Now, what graph do you see here? Well, when I look at this, I see a midline and I see a zero here and going up and then down and back up again. So I see the reciprocal of sine, which is going to be cosecant. I see a cosecant graph here. Okay, so step one, identify the curve. We think it's cosecant x and positive cosecant because our sine went up and then went down. Okay, now what? Well, we need to find our A, our B, our C, and our D. Well, we know that D is the high Y value plus the low Y value divided by 2. So that's 4 over 2 or 2. We know that A <coughs> is our high Y value of 3 minus our D value of 2, and so our amplitude is 1. Okay, now what? Well, uh, B is 
2 pi over the period. And the period is the starting x distance to the ending x distance of one complete period. So if I go from this vertical asymptote to this vertical asymptote, I simply subtract 5 pi over 3 minus a negative pi over 3 gives me 6 pi over 3, or 2 pi. That's my period. We want b, though, and b is 2 pi over the period, so 2 pi over 2 pi is 1. Our b value is 1. Now, what about our c value? Well, our c value, remember, uh, we started um, with a sine graph. Do, 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 do. And our sine graph would be zero here. This is the normal zero point. So where it's not at zero anymore, it's at negative pi over three. And so I think my c value then is negative pi over three. So when we put all this together, we get y equals one cosecant, double parentheses when we go backwards, one x minus a minus, pi over 3, close two parentheses, plus our d value of 2. And if we tidy this up, it would be y equals cosecant x plus pi over 3 plus 2. Okay, there's station 13. Station 14 is also going backwards, but it's a little easier because it's only a sine graph. Here's our sine graph. You see it's, uh, oh, is it sine? It starts high, Mr. Kuklo. It doesn't start on the midline. I think station 14 is a cosine graph that starts here. So I see cosine. I see 1 and negative 1. Hmm. So I think my amplitude 1 and my d value 0. But let's confirm that. 1 plus negative 1 divided by 2 is 0. And remember, high y value minus our d value gives us our amplitude of 1. Okay, and we've got a c and a b to find. Okay, so b, remember, is 2 pi over the period. And the period is this ending x value minus this starting x value. So we've got 2 pi over 7 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6. Well, that's 2 pi over 6 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over pi, which is 2. Our b value is 2. And what about our shift? Well, normally, this is x equals 0, y equals 1. This is 0, 1 on the cosine graph. But ours here is pi over 6, so I've shifted the graph pi over 6. So then we end up with y equals 1, cosine, double parentheses, 2, x minus pi over 6, close two parentheses, plus 0. <coughs> um, I certainly don't need to write these, and you're welcome to distribute here if you want. But I find students make mistakes when they do that, so I would just leave it this way. Uh, don't forget to close two parentheses here. And remember, because we shifted our graph to the right, pi over 6, this is minus pi over 6. Okay, our last station, here we go. 1, sine inverse 1 half. What angle within the restriction of sine has an upness of 1 half? Pi over 6 does. B sine inverse negative 1 half. What angle within the restriction of inverse sine has an upness of negative 1 half? No, it is not 5 pi over 6, uh, 7 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. It is negative pi over 6 because we need to be thinking about that restriction from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. C says cosine inverse of negative 1 half. What angle within the restriction of inverse cosine from 0 to pi has an x value of negative 1 half? 
and that's 2 pi over 3. D, tangent inverse of negative 1. Okay, so tangent uh, has a restriction from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's where it's tangents vertical asymptotes are. And we're looking for a place when the y value and the x value are our opposites. Well, those are opposites at negative pi over 4. Okay, E. E says sine inverse negative root 2 over 2. Okay, where within the restriction for inverse sine do we get negative root 2 over 2? Hey, that's also negative pi over 4. I was just thinking about that with the last problem. F. F says cosine of cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. Okay, is this that situation where I can cancel or not? If you don't know, um, we can go the long way and say what angle within the restriction of inverse cosine has an overness of negative root 2 over 2. That restriction is 0 to pi. On 0 to pi, the x value is negative root 2 over 2 at 3 pi over 4. So what's the cosine of 3 pi over 4? Negative root 2 over 2. So yes, this was a situation where we could cancel. And then finally, g. g, we've got sine inverse of sine of 5 pi over 3. Um, so the sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. And what angle within the restriction of inverse sine negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 has a y value or an upness of negative root 3 over 2, and that would be negative pi over 3. Okay, and then the last four, Roman numeral 2, are draw triangle problems. A says sine of tangent inverse of 3 over 4. So let's draw our triangle where the tangent is 3 over 4. And we use our Pythagorean theorem or Pythagorean triples to find this missing side. And then we say, well, what's the sine of this theta? This sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so 3 fifths. B, sine of cosine inverse of x. Okay, remember, I like to think of this as x over 1. So this is x, this is 1, and if I use the Pythagorean theorem, I get 1 minus x squared. Okay, there's our theta, and what's the sine in this picture? The sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or root 1 minus x squared over 1, or simply root 1 minus x squared. C says, what's the secant of sine inverse of four fifths. So let's draw that triangle where the sine is four over five. The missing side would be three because I know my Pythagorean triples, but you could find it with the Pythagorean theorem. And then what's the secant in this picture? Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, and so we end up with five thirds. And our last problem on the stations is what's the tangent of cosine inverse of x over 3? So let's draw that triangle with x over 3 as the cosine, so adjacent hypotenuse. If I use the Pythagorean theorem to find this missing side, I get 9 minus x squared. Please do not take the square root of each piece of that and tell me that this is going to be 3 minus x. That is so pool noodle. Okay, what's the tangent in this picture? The tangent in this picture is opposite over adjacent, so square root of 9 minus x squared over x is our answer. And we're done with the stations. All right, well, good luck on the test.